Today we're going to learn to divide whole numbers by decimals and we're going to use models when we do that. We're going to start out with something that we already know. A basic problem where we're going to divide a whole number by a whole number is pretty easy. We see 10 items here and we're going to divide that by 2. Now what does that actually mean? Well that means we're going to take the 10 items and we're going to divide them into two equal parts. So we could say here's a part, here's a part. Are they equal? Yep they are. And our quotient of course is going to be 5 because there's 5 in each group. But there's actually a second way that we can look at that. We could say this means 10 items divided into groups of two. So here's a group of two, and here's another group of two, another group of two. When, how many groups of two do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So our quotient was the same, whether we said we're going to break it into two equal parts, we got five, or break it into parts that are each two in size, and we got five. Uh, we could also, of course, write that out with the algorithm, right? How many times does two fit into five? I should say fit into 10. So two doesn't fit into one, two does fit into 10 five times, right? So there's our quotient. How many times does two fit into our dividend? How many times does it fit into 10? Another example of a whole number divided by a whole number here, we have 42 dots. And if we are going to divide that by three, right? Our problem is 42 divided by three. We're saying how many times does three fit into 42? Well, if we used our model, we could say three fits in once, twice, right? Three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 times. Now we could also say, let's take our 42 and break them into groups, uh, into three groups, right? And if we did that, we're going to have 14 in each group. But we could also say how many times does 3 fit into 42? And it's still going to be 14. And we really are going to shift our thinking to think about how many times does our divisor fit into the amount that we're starting with. Now, what happens when we have a decimal that we're going to divide by? Well, let's look at this situation. James has $3. If stamps cost 50 cents, how many stamps can James buy? So what would our math problem be? Well, we're going to write the expression 3, because he's got $3. That's what we start with. And we're going to divide it by 50 cents, or divide it by 0 and 50 hundredths, because that's the size of each group. And we want to know how many times does 50 cents fit into his $3. So now that we know what the problem is, we can use a very simple model to create that. What are these rectangles? Well, these are dollars, right? One, two, three dollars. We want to know how many of these 50 cent stamps he can buy. So we know that each dollar, how many times does 50 cents fit into it? Well, there's 50 cents and there's 50 cents and that's a dollar. And here'd be another 50 cents and another 50 cents, right? We could count one, two, three, four, five, six of them because we could get 50 cents to fit into three six times. Or if we took three and we broke it into chunks of 50 cents, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Another very basic one we can use a model for. Janelle has $2, so we're gonna start with two, and gumballs cost 25 cents, and we wanna know how many gumballs she can purchase. So if we took $2, how many times can 25 cents fit into that? Or how many groups would we have if we took $2 and we broke them up into sizes of 25 cents a piece. Again, we can use a simple model. These are our dollars, $1, $2. And how many times does a quarter fit into a dollar? Well, a quarter fits into it four times, right? Four times 25 cents would give us a dollar. So one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, right? We could take eight quarters and fit them into $2, or we could take two dollars break them up into quarters, and we'd have eight of them. So there's our example of some models when we're breaking up into 50 cents or breaking up into 25 cents. But what happens if we need to show division by something other than 50 cents or other than 25 cents? So like here's an example where we have one divided by two tenths. We're dividing one, that's the, what we're dividing, into groups that are each two tenths in size. Well, we can use simple base 10 blocks. This whole block represents one whole thing. One divided into groups that are two tenths. Each one of these sticks is a tenth. So one tenth, two tenths, right? There's a group. One tenth, two tenths, one tenth, two tenths, one tenth, two tenths, and one tenth, two tenths. How many times did we bundle up a group of two tenths? Well, let's just count them. One time, two times, three, four, five of those groups. Two tenths fits into one five 
times. Here's another example where we can use base 10 blocks. This time we have two whole things, right? Each giant big green square is one whole thing. And we're going to divide it into groups of two tenths again. So since each stick is a tenth, we're going to say one tenth, two tenths, one tenth, two tenths, right? And I'm just going to keep on grouping two tenths at a time. And we're going to see how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We get ten of those groups that are each two tenths in size. So our models can help us. What if we had three whole things? Well, that's fine. We're going to do it the same way. Three divided by six tenths. So if each bar is a tenth, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So that would be a group. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to borrow two of these from over here. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So that's my second group. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's another group. I'm going to borrow two tenths from here and four tenths from over here. And that's going to be a fourth group. And I should be able to fit one more group here. Let's see. Do I have six tenths? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So our quotient would be five. Now we can always check with multiplication. All right. I'm going to work backwards. What do I mean by working backwards or the inverse operation? I'm going to say, what's five times six? Do I get three? Well, five times six is 30. All right. Five times zero is zero. And bring down our three. Our problem had one decimal place, so our product's going to have one decimal place. And hey, look at that. I got three, just like I started with. You can even use hundredths. Each of these tiny, tiny little ones is called a hundredth because it takes a hundred of them to make a whole. <clears throat> so if I had three holes here, one, two, three whole things divided into groups of 75 hundredths, well, let's see here. There's one hundredths, two hundredths, three hundredths. I'm not, I don't want to count 75 of them. I know there's 10 hundredths in each one of these sticks. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Plus, I'm going to grab five more right here. I'm going to say there's a group that has 75 little hundredths in it. But I can clearly make some more of those bundles. Here's what that would look like. Each of these groups has 75 hundredths in it. Because I could again count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75 little hundredths. So how many do I have? I have four. And again, we could do the math to figure out, well, does 75 hundredths four times give us three? And when you do that, you'll see, yes, in fact, it does. You can even have groups that are larger than a whole. Here I have six whole things, but what if I want to break it into groups that are one and a half or one and five tenths each? Well, here's one. And how about that half? Well, each stick is a tenth. So one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. I'm going to go ahead and say there's a group, and then I can make another group that's one whole and five tenths. I can make another group that's one whole and five tenths, and I can make a last group that is one whole plus one, two, three, four, five tenths. How many groups did we make? We made four groups. And again, you can do the math to check. Does one and five tenths times four equal six? And of course, you'll see that it does. So here's our last one. This time I have five, right? One, two, three, four, five whole things. And I'm going to break it into groups of 2.5, two and five tenths. You can, again, think of that as two and a half. So here's one, two, plus one, two, three, four, five. And then I've got one, two over here, plus one, two, three, four, five. So as I bundle those, how many groups did I make? Well, I can have two of them. And again, you can do the multiplication to check what is two times two and five tenths. Does that equal five? So we've seen how we can make models, whether we have simple models with base 10 blocks or our dollar models. Either way, we're thinking how many times does this divisor fit into our dividend? Hope that helps.